That's great. Big win. Yeah, it was a big win. No, I, I, I cannot be prouder of my team. You know, that was one of the that was one of the best wins we've had here in a long time. And after Syracuse and North Carolina, you know, the emotional wins and uh, Jaws injury, you know, without the seven guys and for our guys to play like that is spectacular. Just spectacular. I'm so proud of them. Uh, they adjusted to a little bit different, not a little bit different, but a lot different game plan and our three-quarter court press worked very well. <clears throat> and, um, you know, Quinn, you know, I'm not sure anybody's played any better in the league than Quinn. You know, you know and Led, and, and he did it again today, and Justice had a spectacular game. But the, all the kids played. You know, Marshall gave us huge 24 minutes. His physicality and energy. Grayson keeps coming on. And uh, again, proud of my guys. This is, I wasn't sure what was going to happen today. And uh, what I got was a spectacular performance by, by this dude team. You know, great seven guys. Very, very good. You were down 15-13. Then you held them for six and a half minutes without a field goal that broke the game open. You remember that time, Sidney? Well, you know, they missed some shots. You know, so it's all, you know, a lot of it's what you do, but some of it is they just, they've met, they missed. I mean, they had some good looks, they, they missed. But the good thing for us is once we got a, like a three point lead or a five, we didn't let up. We didn't let up and we had a, you know, we had a good end of half. You know, Quinn scoring, and then we had a great response when it got down to ten. We got we started hitting some threes. We uh, we ran offense. We called that time called a timeout before a timeout. You know, and we got a score then. And then when it got down to ten, our guys had a, a great three point response, and uh, that helped because our guys are tired. Look, man, you know. You don't go through all this stuff with the limited amount of guys and how young these guys are without being tired. So, you know, it, it gave them a, seeing that ball go in like that made the defense play a little bit better. And we got some steals and runouts. And um, you know, when you get some layups and, and hit a couple threes, man, you know, the world is good. You know, the world is really good. What have medical people given you the idea about Jaleel's a yeah, long term? Yeah, good, good stuff. You know, he just, he could not play today. You know, but there's nothing structurally wrong. He, had, he has a sprain. I mean, I don't know if you saw the replay of it. He landed on James's foot and really twisted it. During the game, he's not going to get the swelling because he's taped and the adrenaline's gone. But it's more of getting the swelling out of there. And he's a big guy, you know, obviously. And. Uh, he keeps improving every day. We're hoping that he'll be ready by Wednesday. And uh, he wanted, you know, like, he's such a great kid. You know, Latin, we tried to not do a lot of physical stuff, but, you know, Thursday we couldn't do anything, you know, and except give you a preview of, of this class. And then on Friday we had a short practice in the afternoon, and then we came back at night to walk through our game plan. We did that again this morning. So we give him in different doses. But last night, we're going to, and pretty much he kind of knew. He went, you could see tears in his eye, you know. Like the kid wants to play so badly. And you know, we, we, we talked to him about, don't feel guilty. Like you're not letting anybody down. And just, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna need more time. And we wanted to wait until today <coughs> Just because our staff does such a great job, you know, with Jose and Nick, that I've seen him produce miracles, you know. And uh, and if he was ready to play, we'd play him. But he, he couldn't play today. He, he just couldn't play today. Coach, early in the season, he's used your press. Uh, is it something we're going to be looking forward to seeing uh, more often going forward, or will was it just more of a game plan thing? Yeah, you know, I don't. We just we have it. So if we feel. We need it, then we'll use it. You know, today we thought our theme for today was strong together. And sometimes when you're playing man to man, 
you like it's my man and so we we thought three quarter court pickup in two different ways with the two two one and then the uh, the one two two after free throws would we could be strong without getting hurt further up the court and then hopefully we'd be strong when we got to half court and and our guys were so they basically they knew they had each other's back and how does and, the zone complement your credits well the, the zone works with that two two one because you you it's really an extension of a two one two zone so you can a lot of you know, you know jim calhoun used it forever you know a lot better than we did you know, uh, and used it against us by the way a lot better than we attacked it but the uh it lends itself to come back into a zone because you have that two guard front so uh, you know, we've tried some you know, different things. I've mentioned that we're going to you know, you know, continue to do that. And uh, today, things worked very well. You the press point. not only forced turnovers, I'm but sorry? the press not only forced turnovers, led to fast break. Can you talk a bit about the aggression your team had? In, in well, I think they saw that Clemson had a hard time attacking it. They got through it, but they didn't attack it. And then you could set up another defense. And so, Every once in a while, you could be even more aggressive because there wasn't an attack. It was more to beat it across half court. And our guys sensed that. I mean, it's all on our guys. Look, you can do whatever you want, but if they're not playing hard and smart and whatever, I mean, they make the thing go. And uh, they did today. Brad said that he anticipated you'd play some zone today. Brad, yeah. when he was in here, said he would anticipate that you would play some zone, but not as much as you did today. Was that something that you, when you saw how well it was working, to stick with it, or did you plan on playing zone most well, of the time? Well, we had two game plans, one if Ja was going to play and one if he didn't. And then on Thursday, we already started, you know, we we're going to go 32, 12, our makes, and we'd number it 33, 8 on, on, on free throws. and. You know, our guy, we, we kind of rehearsed that without Ja like three different times, and um, um, yeah, we we have to play more zone, a lot of zone today. I mean, they would have cut us up, you know, and, we, and we're worried about fouls, you know, like if Justice Justice went over a guy's back just before the first TV timeout, and you know, said, so, "Whoa, you can't." You're too important for, for that. And so they, they did have good discipline the rest of the game. I'm sorry. You, you yeah. want to get cut off again? Sure. All right. uh, it seemed like you made a point to pump up the crowd a couple times to get into it with them. Was that a conscious? Yeah, thing? yeah, because I think, you know, you know, again, I've been here a long time. After a Carolina game, there's a – people want – especially if you want, they're not as hungry. They're not as hungry. Now, they're – it was great to see the place full and there is energy. You know, you can, look, you gotta deal with reality. We either have eight or seven guys. That's not a lot. I've never done that before. And so we need all the emotional support that we can get. And uh, they responded, uh, they responded, so that was good. Did you hear Coach Williams' comments about the crowd at Carolina today? Was that part of it as well? No, no, I don't. Why would I? How would I do that? No, I'm just saying before. No, no, but I don't want. I don't even know who played today. Yeah, because he commented on the crowd there. Not okay, that's great. Well, so. Yeah, but I don't know that because I don't. I can't. I don't know scores. I'm like this is what I. That's what I do today, and then. So that that that's just me being uh, narrow-minded. Guy, but that I obviously I didn't say anything because of Roy saying something. My, my Although not that he said something bad, he probably said something real smart that I should have said something about. But you want to keep going there because now I, I got all the time in the world. We can have a few drinks and then so we can, we can whisper in someone's ear and see where it ends up. Mike, you're yeah. talking about fatigue, uh, but do you think? Uh, for young guys, but as, as a senior, Quinn, when you took him out in the last minute, that's the first time he's been off the floor since the Notre Dame game. Yeah. And does he have more stamina? As he a does, Al. It's a great point. And he, you know, I'm not saying he's Bobby Hurley as far as the type of player, mm -hmm. but Hurley never got tired. Quinn doesn't get tired. 
Quint's in unbelievable shape. You know, they're the guys that I've had, you know, Johnny never got tired. Johnny never sweat. He, he didn't even sweat. I wanted to throw water at him a lot of times in total. You know, Bobby never. Duhan never got tired. And Quinn doesn't get tired. I don't know, there's something. And he, again, he works at it, but there's something in it. And, you know, and he had a couple big, big threes, man. You know, beside, I mean, he's got 27 points. Mike, over the last couple of years, we've seen freshman point guards who have come in kind of, I guess, Tyler Ennis from last year, maybe somebody that comes to mind. What, what was Tyus's, the biggest learning curve he had, or what, what were some of kind of the little things that you really felt like you had to teach him about? Well, I think he, he came in, one, he's, he's terrific. And he's got great poise. He's never afraid. And he understands the game. Two of the things that he has learned and he has to continue to learn is not, he has to talk and that people will listen to him. Make, in other words, make people be in the right spots and be a mother. Like, eat this, eat, go, to, make your bed. Go, you know, in other words, and I tell him, like, mothers are the greatest point guards in the world. They got four kids. Every one of them is no. You're doing this. Come with me. Get in the back seat. Put your thing. That's what a point guard should do. And and then at times he'll defer. He hasn't done it much in January and February. Where, well, he did. Uh, he passed up a three in the last game, and then then the next time guys got on, he hit it. And cut an eight-point lead to f five, I think. And uh, but Quinn has been s superb with him. Uh, that, excuse me, that relationship has exceeded what I could have ever thought would happen. I thought it was going to be good. It's exceeded that. They are really, really close and together. And uh, Quinn helps them because. Quinn sees stuff, and then he sees it better if he's not handling the ball. So you basically have two minds out there and two ball handlers who are okay with one guy having it more, but you were a smarter team, you know, having those two guys out like that. And I thought that might happen, and it's happened better. <laughs> it's just happened, happened better because of those two kids. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Yeah.